Okay, so students, we have already discussed the chapter sound in our previous lecture. So today we will be doing the exercise. So I'll be explaining you. I'll giving. I'll be giving you the solutions as well as explanation for the exercise questions. So let us quickly go to the exercise part. Here. So the first question is, choose the correct answer. Sound can travel through gases only, liquids only, solids only, solids, liquids and gases. Sound can travel through all the three material media. It can travel through solids, liquid and gases. Sound, remember, cannot travel through vacuum. Sound does not travel or cannot travel through vacuum. What is vacuum? Vacuum is the absence of any material media. So for the propagation of sound, we need a material media. Number two, voice of which of the following is most likely to have a minimum frequency? Minimum frequency means if the sound will be a low pitched sound. So, which one will be a low-pitched sound? A baby girl, a baby boy, a man, a woman. So, firstly, the baby's sound are very high-pitched sound. Okay. Then comes the sound of women. They are also high-pitched. And then the lowest of them all is a man. So, answer will be a man. C. Option C. Question number three. In the following statements, tick T against true and false, F against false. Sound cannot travel in vacuum. So what did I teach you? Did sound, does sound travel in vacuum? No. So the statement is absolutely correct. True. Number two. The number of oscillations per second of a vibrating object is, is its time period. False. The number of oscillations per seconds of a vibrating object is its frequency. Okay. Time period is one now uh, time taken for one oscillation. Whenever they say the number of oscillations per second, they are talking about the number of oscillations in one second. Then that is that thing, that property of sound is called frequency. So answer over here will be false. If the amplitude of vibration is large, the sound is feeble. Again, false. If the amplitude of vibration is large, the sound will be loud. It will be a loud sound. Yes, if the amplitude of vibration is small, sound will be feeble. Alright, now coming to the third one. For human ears, the audible range is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. True. The human range audible frequency is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. The lower the frequency of vibration, the higher is the pitch. False. The lower the frequency of vibration, the lower is the pitch. Okay. It is directly proportional. Higher the frequency, higher the pitch. Lower the frequency, lower the pitch. Number F. Unwanted or unpleasant sound is termed as music. False. What is it termed as? Noise. Anything that is unpleasant to our ear is called noise. Noise pollution may cause partial hearing impairment. Yes, and sometimes permanent also. If it is prolonged, it can lead to any partial or permanent hearing impairment. Now coming to the fill in the blank. A. Time taken by an object to complete one oscillation. What taken? Time taken. So it is called time period. Okay. Loudness is determined by the dash of vibration. It is determined by the amplitude of vibration. We have already discussed, right? You can see the lecture. The unit of frequency is 
herds you can write it in full form with small h and the abbreviation will be h capital h small z okay unwanted sound is called noise the sound which is unwanted or unpleasant is called noise shrillness of a sound is determined by the frequency of vibration two things remember the loudness depends on the amplitude the shrillness or the pitch depends on the frequency all right number five a pendulum oscillates 40 times in four seconds find its time period and frequency okay so how do we find this we have done it in our lecture first let us do how do we get the time period time period will be time taken by number of oscillations okay many of you must be thinking from where did we get this formula you can totally skip this formula i'll show you how you can do it without formula also let me show you this first time period is equals to time taken by number of oscillations so time taken is how much four seconds Four seconds by number of oscillation is how much 40 all right so if you calculate this you will get 0 0.1 second so answer for the time period will be 0 0.1 second let me show you how you can do it without the formula you should only know the definition of time period so what is the definition of time period time period is the time taken for one oscillation so, uh, 40 oscillations take 4 seconds, right? The pendulum oscillates for 40 times. And how many seconds it takes? 4 seconds. Therefore, if you want to calculate the time period, you need to see 1 oscillation takes how much time. So, for 1 oscillation, unitary method, 4 upon 40, all right? Now, you cancel this and you get it 0 0.1 second. Right, so you don't need to remember the formula if you just know the concept, if you just know the definition for time period, you can easily solve the question. Okay, now uh, the second thing is frequency. Frequency you can easily do. You know, uh, what is frequency? I discussed in my lecture the formula for frequency is 1 by time period. So, what you can do is 1 by time period. So, that will be 1 by 0. 1 that will give you how much 10 hertz so answer for the frequency is 10 hertz again frequency also you can go via unitary methods all right so uh, how will you do frequency with unitary method let me show you that also Okay, so when we talk about frequency, the definition of the frequency is what? What is frequency? Number of oscillations in one second. So in four seconds, how many oscillations it is making? 40 oscillations. 40 oscillations. Therefore, in one second, if you want to find out the frequency, you need to know one second how many oscillations. So in one second, 40 by 4. 4 ones are 4, 4 10. So, therefore, answer is 10 hertz. Alright. So, there are ways. You can either go by the formula. If you remember the formula, go by the formula. If you know the concept, you know the definition of frequency, then you go with the definition and solve it. Alright. Now, number 6. The sound from a mosquito is produced when it vibrates its wing at an average rate of 500 vibrations per second. What is the time period of vibration so again what you can see they have given you that in one second it is doing 500 vibrations right so simply if you use the formula this 500 vibrations per second is the frequency you can write 500 hertz therefore time period is equals to 1 by frequency which will give you 1 by 500 so the answer will be 0. 0.5 
two seconds. All right. This is if you go by the formula. If you want to do the unitary method, again, what you need to do, you need to know what is time period. Time period is what is time period? Now, uh, time period is the time taken for one oscillations. Okay, so for five hundred oscillations, the time period is one second. So for one oscillation, it will be one by five hundred, which will again give you zero point zero zero two seconds. All right. So both ways you should get the answer. All right. Number seven. Identify the part which vibrates to produce sound in the following instrument. Number one, dhola. So in dhola, I told you stretched membrane. Answer will be stretched membrane. In sitar, what is it? The stretched string. Okay, and in flute, it is a wind instrument and uh, the air column vibrates to produce the sound. So, vibration of air column. Clear? Now, let us come to question number 8. What is the difference between noise and music? Can music become noise sometimes? Yes, absolutely. So first of all, what is the difference between noise and music? Noise is something that is unpleasant to hear, that is disturbing, that is unwanted. Whereas music is something which produces a pleasing sensation. All right. So you can write that music is a sound which produces a pleasing sensation while Noise is an unwanted, unpleasant sound. Okay. Music is produced by nature, musical instruments, etc. Noise is produced by horns of vehicles, by machines, etc. Okay. Loudspeakers. Now, music can become noise when we play it at a very high volume or too many music being played at the same time can lead to unpleasant loudness right so yes music can become noise sometimes question number nine list sources of noise pollution in the surroundings so there are a lot of sources like uh, sounds of vehicles sounds of vehicles Okay, then we have explosions, which explosions, that is or like bursting of tires or crackers. Okay, uh, then we have uh, like uh, suppose... Mm, what else we can say machines sound coming out from machines factories loudspeakers okay etc okay clear now explain in what way noise pollution is harmful to human also you can write over here in question number nine a uh, uh, loud sound uh, due to tv uh, okay, if TV is played at a loud sound or some certain devices at our, uh, which we use at the, our house, they can also be a source of noise pollution. Okay, question number 10. Explain in what way noise pollution is harmful to human. Lack of sleep, we discussed what are the harmful effects. Lack of sleep. Okay, hypertension. That is increase in the blood pressure, hypertension, okay. And uh, what else? Anxiety. And there can be many more health disorders. In fact, a person who is exposed to a loud noise continuously, they can have temporary or even permanent 
hearing impairments. All right. Now, question number 11. Your parents are going to buy a house. They have been offered one on the roadside and another three lanes away from the roadside. Which house would you suggest your parents should buy? Explain your answer. Obviously, you will suggest your uh, parents to buy uh, a house which is away from the noise pollution. Okay, so if you will suggest a roadside house, you will be continuously exposed to the honking of the vehicles, etc. Right? So, we will, we, you should suggest them to buy a house another three lanes away from the roadside because in that case, you will be exposed to a very less amount of noise because you will be staying away from the roadside all right is it clear to all of you so question number 11 you can write that we will take it away from the roadside so that the noise pollution level will be lesser okay question number 12 sketch the larynx and explain its function in your own words uh, guys please you can uh, see the the diagram of the larynx in uh, Google, we have already discussed in the lecture. I cannot sketch it right now. You can check that out. If you want me to sketch it, just mention it in the comment section. I will sketch and label it in another video. Okay. Now, question number 13. Question number 13 says, Lightning and thunder take place in the sky at the same time and at the same distance from us. Lightning is seen earlier. Thunder is heard later. Can you explain why? I'll tell you. The speed of sound in air is 330 meter per second, approx. Some books write 330, some books write 340. Let us take 330 meter per second, approx. The speed of light in air is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. So you only tell me which one is more. Speed of light or speed of sound. Obviously light travels much faster than sound. That is why lightning is seen earlier and the thunder is heard later. Is it clear to all of you? So that's all for the day. Any question, any query, you all are most welcome to ask it in the comment section. Okay. So, please uh, see the video, like it, subscribe the channel and share it with your friends. Thank you so much.